Today I want to show you four tools that are essential to build advanced LLM use cases. Let's dive into it. We started seeing tools that one may call LLM stack. So tools designed to facilitate using large language models in the context of software systems, applications. Especially when you're looking at more advanced LLM use cases dedicated to a broader audience, for example, a chatbot persona to converse with or an application that allows your company to summarize extremely long and extremely boring contracts or perhaps searching through and retrieving information from any single document that you have in your team. All of this is possible today with large language models and it's a super exciting time to build stuff. And so today I'm gonna break down LLM stack as it's becoming to shape into four categories. So bear with me. Number one, foundation models. No surprises here. Foundation models are large language models that were pre-trained on a massive amount of information out there. And during that pre-training, they learned the patterns of communication that we humans do, and now are able to generate human-like responses to any query we give them. There is a plethora of model options out there. You can now use a bunch of models coming from companies like OpenAI, Anthropic, Cohere, I'm sure there will be more models to come. You can also use open source models. There are pluses and minuses to each of the options. For example, proprietary models are better today. Let's face it. <laughs> they excel at various tasks and they can be used out of the box without the necessity of fine tuning and further tweaking. They are also easier to use because you can access them via an API call, which is as easy as it gets, I guess, to use the power of LLMs. Another benefit is that proprietary models tend to be designed with users in mind. Companies allow you to use them in a plethora of business contexts and make money off of using large language models, which is not always the case in open source models. There are plenty of very exciting, powerful open source models out there, but many of them do not have the license that allows you to use them in a business context. So have that in mind whenever you're looking at your open source options. Why would you choose open source then? There is plenty of good reasons for that. For example, very good reason is data security. If you care about deploying your model on your own premises, then choosing an open source model is a must currently, although it might change in the future. These are the factors that you want to look at when it comes to choosing your foundation model for the core reasoning capabilities of your app. You do want to look at the size of the model because it's still a relevant criterion. You want to look at the context size, so the context window of the model, how much of the information at any given time it can actually process. You want to look at the data that the model was trained on. It's not always possible, but most of the time you have a good understanding of the type of data that was used and also the type of techniques. So for example, was the data only the open source data that's available on the internet out there? Or was there any reinforcement learning with human feedback involved? You may want to look at these things because they will determine the quality of the output. Now, the next step is honestly just let it perform like the POC on your use case and check whether this is the right model for you, whether it needs any fine tuning or whether it's going to perform perfectly okay with zero shot prompting. Another thing you will need to decide on is the trade-offs between quality and speed or cost. Bigger models give higher quality of the output, but are slower. They are also more expensive. So if you're looking at cutting the cost because you're hitting API millions of times, then you do really want to optimize the cost so that you don't run out of money. Now that you've chosen your favorite LLM model out there, you want to enhance it perhaps with your private data something that you don't want to share out there. You just want the model to be able to access it so that you can use it in your own specific context. How do you go about something like this? You want something called data framework. Lama Index is an example of such a data framework that connects foundation models to the toolkit that helps you to connect it to your data, such as APIs, docs, PDFs, SQL, what have you. It also helps you to structure that data to be able to manipulate it with the large language model. And also it creates a retrieval interface on top of your data to be able to run queries. What does that mean exactly? Imagine that there is any kind of data in your organization like super long 
contracts. With Llama Index, you're able to create a retrieval interface on top of that data and ask intricate questions and retrieve accurate responses. Pretty dope. I really like this demo that shows how to post complex queries with multiple documents and using advanced query engine that Llama Index provides. So check out that demo because it's a really good one. Number three, vector embeddings and vector databases. If you are going to process efficiently the large amount of data using large language models, you need to get familiar with vector embeddings. Vector embeddings are essentially numeric representations of text that capture a lot of the relationships, a lot of the patterns and structures between the words and sentences within this text. Embeddings allow large language models to understand better and more precisely the text that they are dealing with and to remember it for the future tasks. To handle large amounts of this new type of data efficiently, we now have new type of databases called vector databases. They are essentially designed to store, organize, and search through vast amounts of unstructured data using embeddings. Storing embeddings in a vector database makes it very easy for our large language model to access and use them. This is especially helpful when you are building applications that involve real-time processing, for example, chatbots, where you have a lot of back and forth real time between the user and the large language model. Vector database allows your system to quickly retrieve the information and that way provide a better user experience for users of your application. With a good vector database, you can do stuff like find a similar document to a given document considering its topic or its sentiment or create a recommendation system for a product given its ratings and its features. I recommend you to check out this J. Alamar starter code to search 10 million vector embeddings from Wikipedia in a bunch of languages. And finally, number four, agent frameworks. Agent frameworks are these cutting edge tools that enable more advanced LLM use cases involving agents, prompt management, and chaining. Langchain is currently the hottest framework out there that includes all of these. Langchain library provides useful abstraction layer on top of the components that are needed to build large language model applications. And these components could be templates of prompts. Think about templates such as question answering prompts or explain like I'm five type of prompts. Foundation large language models, which we have covered in the point number one, memory could be a short-term memory, could be a long-term memory. There is a way to structure that within your LLM application. And finally, agents. I'm going to get to what agents mean in a second, but I want to let you know that Langchain library allows you to chain these different components together in multiple configurations that let you effectively execute specific LLM use case. I am particularly excited about agents and here is why. Agents connect LLMs to external sources of data and tools, such as search engines, APIs, databases, calculator, or perhaps something that will help you to execute code. You can already get a sense of why agents are so powerful. Agents enhance large language models where their biggest weaknesses are. For example, they are able to plug into a calculator and help the model perform complex mathematical tasks that otherwise LLM wouldn't be good at. They also give LLMs this powerful flexibility where they're able to recover from an error if they perform one, or they're able to better handle complex tasks that involve multiple steps. A really good example of an agent is AutoGPT, which is an agent that is designed for more open-ended tasks that has a long-term memory and is able to retain it in the interactions between the agent and the tools. And here's my favorite demo involving AutoGPT. Richard He gave GPT-4 access to use, click, scroll, fill in forms in Chrome browser. His repo is available as Chrome GPT. That's all today. Are you using any of these tools that I just mentioned? And if yes, what's your experience with them? Let me know in the comments below and let me know if you would like to learn more about them or if you have any specific questions towards them. Bye for now.